You need to know almost nothing about airplanes to know that when the nose of your airplane breaks off, you have a major problem. You definitely should not be able to see the outside from the inside of an airplane. And yet, we find ourselves in this situation after purchasing an airplane on Facebook Marketplace. We thought we were being really careful on the way home. Unfortunately, we were not being careful enough. We hit a bump and everything went south. Head back to our first video linked above if you want to see how that all ensued. We're back after taking about four months off of doing literally nothing to the plane. It's time that we actually start doing some work on it. <laughs> we got completely overwhelmed when the nose of the airplane fell off. Honestly, we were like, we have no clue how to fix this, but winter is coming and we have a giant crack in our plane. We are going to use today. We both have the day off and we're gonna work together, see if we can try to come up with the plan. Mostly that's gonna be on Dave's end because I really don't have a clue about like how to fix noses of airplanes. <laughs> figure out what supplies we're gonna need, how much help we're gonna need when it's actually time to reconnect everything. It's a beautiful day, so we're hoping to make the most of it. So essentially we're trying to see if we could get the, the floor jack to lift up and there's a lot of pressure there. So we know, I was hoping to get the bottom in first and then get that nose up after the bottom's in place, but it's a lot of weight. So I think we're gonna have to do a little bit at a time and kind of uh, work our way up, kind of teeter-tottering both ends as we go up. Um, but if we get it in place, we're going to have trouble um, cutting these sections out that we need to in order to secure it. So we gotta, we got to get it all prepped, which we knew beforehand, but we kind of wanted to get an idea on if that thing was going to move it. And it kind of was moving it. Uh, so we think we were able to do that as we crank up these jacks right here for the nose. Because what we don't want to happen is the, the binding up there, that right? Yeah, we don't want this. Last time it was cutting in and actually uh, cutting through the fiberglass all the way up this way because uh, these weren't lining up. So we need kind of multiple people, one on this jack, one on the other jack, one on that jack, and probably another person to visually look to see if we're we're going correctly. So we're going to prep the inside. Yeah. Okay. In order to figure out how to reconnect the nose back to the fuselage on our 32 passenger commercial airplane, we needed to remove a lot of the paneling within the cockpit to figure out exactly how we were going to reattach the nose to the rest of the airplane. Oh, I don't even know if we'll put that back up. Make it a little bigger in here? Yeah, you have it's a closet. Yeah. A little space for people's stuff. Plastic paneling on the interior part of the fuselage also needed to be removed so that we could see what we were going to be able to use to reconnect the fuselage to the cockpit nose of the airplane. These are different widths. The wood? Yeah. This is way bigger gap than that gap. Over there. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I see what they did. I mean, they nailed tons of nails. Okay. Through here. So it's like, I can see those nails. Oh, um, yeah. Right here. Yeah, there's little nails in there, okay. And then these are attached 
to that outer side. So if we put a piece in, we're only attaching it to the this, not the actual outer shell. Oh. Might have to cut it out, you know. But that's going to be the main. We're going to bolt it there. I mean, maybe we can switch spots, but. We might be able to get one here. Because he's got. I guess you could just drill a new hole in that on. Yeah, I guess I can get some tool, multi tool, and cut it out. And then try to start fabbing stuff in. Is that what was holding that plane together? <laughs> what is that? Who knows? <laughs> These might be useful. For uh, reinforcing it? Like yeah, all the broken wood here. This is about the same thickness as probably what they should have used in the first place. After taking an inventory of all the wood that we found in the bottom of the plane that we thought might work to help piece back together our plane, David took some measurements and got to work with his table saw cutting more boards in hopes of being able to fill that gap with some good solid wood that would allow us to have something sturdy to reattach the two pieces of the plane back together. After lots of measuring, cutting, and finagling, David was able to get the pieces of wood just the right size to be able to then screw those pieces of wood into the gap in the airplane so that we would have something nice and solid to put a pin through to secure the fuselage to the nose of the airplane. In preparing for attaching the nose of the airplane back onto the fuselage, it was really important that all of the cracked bent wood that was broken in the initial accident to get all those pieces of wood laying nice and flat against the new pieces of wood that he was patching in. Some of those pieces of wood were extremely stubborn. He tried hammering them in, he tried drilling them down, and they just didn't want to lay flat. He ended up having to use his multi-tool to cut sections of that wood out and replacing it with new pieces of wood. All right, so what I, we were thinking is uh, using a uh, threaded rod. Uh, and actually, that's how it was set up initially, but doing like twice, three times as many connection points as what it was. So that's the goal. We're scabbing in some wood here. We might actually tie it back to the next ring in or the rib in to give it even more strength. So. What we'll probably do is actually, this is the cool part, right? Let's see if I can get it. 
Easier said than done. See how strong you are. There we go. Where's the yellow slide you can zoom out on? Yeah, yellow slide would be great. It's a dream of everyone's, I think, is to go out on that yellow slide. Except for the whole crashing part, probably not so much. Not so much. Anyway, so okay, let me get in there so I can see. The threaded bolt here. Threaded rod, I should say. Probably put one through there. Probably another one there. Maybe one up here. We'll go through um, multiple points. They only had one connection point. And you can see it's already cracking here. So we're gonna stay below this crack here and actually run a couple down here and maybe one up top, so. Go one way, flip it over to the other side? Yeah. I mean, that's, but it's gonna fly off. It's a small board. On this side of the plane as well, there were lots of little tiny nails sticking out that were once used to help hold the two pieces of the airplane together. We no longer wanted those. In fact, they were actually in the way because they were going to prevent the two parts of the airplane from laying flush together when we propped up the nose of the airplane to repair it. So David tried to use a crowbar to get the nails flat. He used a multi-tool to try to cut some of the nails off. He also tried hammering the nails off, anything he could do to try to get those nails to lay flush again. So yeah, this one and then carpet and then another set. Oh jeez. All this used to be right here. Oh. So it's it's fallen like two inches or so or an inch and a half. Okay. So somehow we need to get that up. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know what to work on, what to do. This really is a bummer, this situation here. In the end, we were so totally overwhelmed by this project that we literally put a tarp over it and tabled the whole project for the entire winter. We did not do a single thing until spring rolled around. With the warmer weather came a burst of optimism and a new mindset, we got out our tractor and decided to fix our airplane. Okay, that's not exactly what happened. Click the video that's popping up on your screen to see how we actually ended up fixing our airplane. If you're watching this in live time, we're so happy you're here, you'll have to wait another week to see how this story ends. So worst case scenario, like what do we do with this thing if the nose 
doesn't get back on. We have to get back.